Hey, welcome back. Now, below the hero banner, we're going to add in our second section. Um, we Obviously, we have a header section, but that's just a header. But we have our hero banner, which we is our section one, and we're going to add in another one. And what we're going to do is add in like a logo carousel. Um, it's something we do on our website as well. It's a cool way of kind of sometimes showing who you're partnered with or even showing off your experience without having too much text. But what we're going to do is make it be like an auto scroll, like almost like a marquee carousel. What do I mean by that is basically the logos are moving so it's like a slider but you're not having to use pagination dots or navigation to move it it's just kind of moving nicely flowing along for you I am going to use a bit of code in here it's like a modification of a code I normally use on my elemental videos but design with cracker went a step further because I was struggling to get one bit to work but I'll talk about that when we get to it so let's go ahead and create our second section I'm going to minimize our hero section and I'm just going to add in a completely new one. So we got a section and container into the container, though, I am going to add a slider. You have two types. You have the standard slider or the nestable. I'm going to go for the nestable mainly because that gives me the option to rearrange things to be how I want. So let me click that. And as soon as I do it, it's, it's down here. You, you know, don't, sorry, it's down here below the hero banner. You do come with, um, go to content, you do come with three slides already. I am going to get rid of all of them because I'd rather start with one, get it to look how I want, and then I will duplicate them to add further items in. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of the button. I don't need to have a button. Now I'm going to go over to my heading and I'm going to add in a class that we've already used. So I'm going to click over here and I'm going to use the standard text because that already had some sizes built in. It's the white one over here. So it, we've already got the sizes built in for the mobile as well. Now I'm going to make some modifications to that, but make sure you undo the yellow there. Get rid of the yellow because anything I, if I was to start touching the color, for instance, and I made it say white or something like that, or I changed the uh, letter spacing, it will apply it to everywhere else you've used that class. So bear that in mind. Let's just go over here and let's make this now be white. Um, and I'm going to go over to content. I mean, you could, you, I mean, no, let me change the colors first. Otherwise you can't even see the content. So the thing to point out is the, the wording there is barely visible because we have this like gray color on the background, easy to sort out. I think it's slider nestable. Yeah, there's a background color there already. Let me just completely clear that. I could add in a black color now so you can read it, but instead of applying it to the slider or the container, I'm actually going to go over to the section and I'm going to apply it there like that. Okay. Um, it's just, I find that if you were to do it to the container, you might get a gap, then you're going to stretch it, then you might have to add in a layout width, and then you might have to add in some further color. But if you do it to the section, it's across the board. I will now go to my container, go to layout, and I will add in 1000 because that's what we used above. So I want to keep things consistent. If I save that and we preview, you can see what's going on there. That's pretty simple and easy to see. Let's go to our heading. Let's go to our content and let's add in some wording. I put bricks educator. I'm going to go to style. Typography will make it be uppercase. I'm going to leave the weight as it is. And uh, in letter spacing, I think I'm going to go with 0.2 REM. No, that's too big. Let's go with 0.1 REM. And what we're also going to add in is a image. So I'm going to go over here, go and get the image and I'm going to drop it in like that. Uh, by the way, sometimes when you drop things, it might go below, just pick it up and move it up. So now we have an image and a heading. Here's a really cool bit now, right? Let's go to our image, go to our content. I'll add in my bricks logo over there. And there we go. It's got a transparent background, by the way, which is quite cool. You know, bear that in mind if you do, if you are going to have like, you know, you got a color, you already got it pre-selected for your background. Transparent colors work really well. I don't really need to set anything else. If, however, there was a little bit of a difference in what you brought forward and now you want to show it differently. So say I wanted to show it as a hundred, you could do, but then I would say maybe it's better for you to have resized it in uh, Canva, Photoshop, wherever, before you bring it over. Because page speed insights and stuff like that could hit you and say, oh, your images are not sized correctly. So have a think about that. What I will do for the image though is give it a little bit of padding. So if I go with about 20, that's a little bit too big. If I go with 10, that's looking kind of okay in a way, okay? So it's kind of in the same region, but it's not too far away if that makes sense. Now I'm gonna duplicate this multiple times and I think there's gonna be seven or eight of these in total. 
You could just go over here and click duplicate and then it will duplicate or you could click on the slider nestable go over here and duplicate this. Now, it might be a good idea to actually rename these. Um, I'm just gonna put bricks there. And then what you would do is you would now know which one was which. So I'm just gonna go in and duplicate like that. And I'm gonna do this and skip ahead. So I've gone and put in seven in and each one of these now, I mean, I could go over here to say one of the ones I've done. Um, if I click it, it will now go over to it. I've changed the image and I've changed the wording that we have here. Now, if I just uh, decrease them over here, when we click on the slider nestable, can also rearrange them. So if I want to pick WordPress up and stick it up, I can do. I can even move this one down as well. You know, you, you can basically rearrange things to how you want them to be on here. So that's pretty, pretty cool. At the moment, they're not moving. They're stationary because we haven't done the slider settings. And what I want to do is have five of them visible on the screen at any one time maybe four maybe five and they scroll one at a time but I don't want it to be like a static scroll you know duh, duh, duh. I don't want that I want it to be an auto moving right let's go to slider nestable okay we have not set any of the options now the first thing I want to do before I do any of that is actually get rid of the pagination I don't need to show any of that because it's all black. If you wanted to show arrows and the dots, you can go for it, but I don't want to show any of that whatsoever. I don't even need to show the arrows. None of that is needed. Okay, in terms of the sliders, I don't need to mess around with the padding and the horizontal alignment or anything like that. Okay, I don't need to start doing this. This is what basically would happen if you change the orientation. Okay, so look, just so you can see what it does, I'm going to undo all of that because it's currently defaulted to be in the middle. We are going to make this be smaller, by the way. This is very, very tall, right? Can you see how tall it is? It doesn't need to be that tall. We are going to shrink this section down, but let's just get the motion working first. Let's go to options. Now, this is we're going to leave as a default. If you were to go to custom, this is where you can start to drop in some code over here. We are going to use some code, but I'm not going to put it in here. I'm going to get rid of that and leave it as default. This will be a loop, which is what it currently defaults to anyway. You do have the option for slide and fade, but we're going to leave it as loop. Left to right is fine. Uh, I'm not going to do anything with the global, uh, the keyboard over there. This is where you come to set the height. So if I was to go in and do 10 VH, you can now see what's happened there. It's shrunk. We'll come back onto that after we've got it working, okay? Now spacing, I'm not going to, I mean, um, I mean, it's not a bad idea to maybe add in a little bit, but I think once you've got the items on, you'll have a better understanding of, do you need to add in 20 pixels, 30 pixels, or how do you want it to look? What is important though, is when we start to get down over here to how fast it's gonna go, and uh, how many items are you gonna show? So the first thing I'm gonna do is go for a five like that. We can now see them. Now, the best thing for you to do is actually to just see this on preview. So um, even though the, this logo here looks bigger than the others, they are all within the 150 width by 50 height uh, estate. Um, so even though that looks bigger, it is actually the same width. So don't be fooled by that, okay? Now that does look okay to me. If you wanted to create more spacing, you could go for it, but I'm quite okay with that, okay? Because I actually created it with some padding around anyway, so I know what I was doing there. Let's go back in over here. And we're going to say it will scroll by one. Now, you don't have to have that one in, but I would say have it in. Uh, I'm going to set the speed for this to be 6,000. Um, and I am going to set this to be an autoplay. Here's the really important bit. I'm going to set the interval for this to be zero. Now, please bear in mind, though, that whenever you do build stuff like this sometimes in bricks, you'll do it and you go, it's not moving. Why is it not moving? And even when you go to preview over here, it still isn't moving. And you, you, don't, you, it, you would probably think, well, it's broken. What's gone wrong? No, what you got to do, right, is uh, view it actually on the front end. This is now on the front end, basically viewing live. And you can see it moving. But can you see that little stop stutter? Can you see it? It's moving and then it goes, whoop. there's a bit of a, whoop, almost like a glitch effect, right? Here's how we're going to make this kind of be more, how we're going to make it be smoother. Make sure you are clicked on the slider nestable, go over to style, go down to CSS down here, and we are going to drop in a little bit of code. Normally when I work with other page builders, I use this code and I've used it in many of my previous videos where I'm doing like, you know, automated carousel testimonial scrolls and stuff like that. I use that and before it over here, 
you would either have a selector, which you don't need to do in Bricks, or I would have put the, the ID of the testimonial carousel or something like that. What you've got to do here, though, is add a little bit more before this part over here. And all of this will be in the description, so you can go and copy and paste it. For it, you need to drop in this bit of code here, okay? And again, it will be in the description. I inspected this because I was trying to understand why is this not working? So I put this in and it just wasn't working. And I inspected it and I got this part here, the splide slide and the splide list, but I was struggling to get it to work. Luckily, Design with Cracker did a video on this and he basically popped this in before and it worked. If I just delete all of that and just have it like that, that will now create an automated scrolling effect and you don't get to stop stutter. So let's just save that. So we have this really nice now little bit of a scrolling effect. I mean, I must say though, um, as I view it now, I use the size over here and because it's now in uppercase, I think the wording here is just too big. Okay, and I am now, I mean, by the way, you can scroll it any way you want. None of this is clickable because there's no URLs. It's not meant to be clickable. I don't want to take you anywhere else. I'm just telling you about what stuff I work with. So I'm now going to say I don't like how big these are. So we're going to make a quick modification. And this is where you'll appreciate the class system. Now, we on purpose did not apply that, okay? Because I wanted to show you the uh, the pros and cons. So by doing what we did, it was quick. It was easy. We got on with it. But if I now go over to my slide number one or bricks was item one and I go to my heading and I go to style and I go to typography and I go here and I pop in say 10, it only applies it there because we did not create a class system. So what we should have done is created a class system and then just implemented it across the board. What we should have done is gone to the heading, gone over here, pulled it slider text, saved it. Instead of having 1.6, maybe we should have gone with, say, 1.4. And what I would have done is for every single one of these, or when it duplicated, you would have had that class applied. Or I could just go over here right now and go, uh, where is it? There it is, slider text. And I could just very quickly just do that. I mean, copy pasting is totally fine as well. But then if you later on go, oh, we want to make it bigger, you do it once and it will apply across the board. Does that make sense? Now, all of my slider text only has the slider text apply, not the standard text, okay? So I wanna show you the pitfalls of using a previous class, which could have worked, but then you go and modify a little bit, you might as well just create a completely different class system, and it means that now your standard text is kept separate from your slider text. Does that make sense? You, I'm pretty sure you're going, well, I wish you had done that at the start. I wanna show you what you could easily assume or do but it's not that difficult for you to revert and change things. And what's really good about doing that is when we eventually move on to the mobile, because we haven't even touched that yet. So let's go on. Let's now go over and do 378. We are going to modify this because this is showing five at the moment. Okay, let's go to slider nestable. Um, in fact, no, before we do that, sorry, can I just go back a step? Let's go back to desktop. The side of the the size of this uh, slider nestable is too big. Let's go over down to options. Now let's make the height of this be a little bit smaller. I don't think it needs to be that high at all. 35 VH works pretty well for me, so we're gonna leave it at that. Now what we're gonna do is go over to the mobile. I'm gonna make sure this says 378 because of the iPhone XR size, so I like to work with that. Um, I'm gonna go ensure I'm still in the slider nestable, go over here, and even though it is 35, uh, sorry, I say vertical height, it's meant to be viewpoint height. It's force of habit, I keep saying vertical height, it's not vertical height, okay? It's viewpoint height, okay? Um, so I'm gonna change that to be, rather than 35, if we were to go with, say, 30 VH, um, yeah, 30 VH. I think 30 VH works a tiny bit. I mean, you could even go with 25, to be honest. There we go. We'll go with 25. That works okay. The obvious problem we have is the items we are showing. So if I was to go with two items, I think we can get away with that. You could go with one if you want. So you only ever have C1 scrolling at any one time and it will be nicely moving. Two, I 
think you get away with that, in my opinion, because it's, you know, you're seeing more of it sliding across now. Um, we don't need to change any of the other settings in here. We can leave all of that as it is. By the way, though, uh, on the desktop and on the mobile, I'm not doing pause on hover or focus. There's, I'm, I don't need you to do that. I'm not showing off a product. I haven't got an interactive link or a button on there. If you did have a button, you probably would want to do pause on hover and something like that. What we're going to do is we are now just going to hit save on that. So when we're viewing this on the live site, it's working pretty damn well. And I think that looks quite nice as a section, especially the dark color, because we have a bit of a dark overlay there and we have dark shades in here as well. It's not kind of jumping out at you. And if you view this on a mobile over here and you can now see how I'm very particular about my sizing. So this is an iPhone XR. Everything looks all right. You scroll down and basically it's just moving like that. And you can see how the two column approach actually works okay compared to the one. Otherwise, as it slides, you have had a bit of black space left and right. So thanks to the design with Cracker for um, adding more to that code because the code I used originally just wasn't working very well at all. But that is a really simple way of just adding in a section where now you're clarifying maybe where what you work on. This is a great way of showing off your skills as well. Maybe you're an expert in PHP, malware scanning, you know, data mining, analytics, SEO, stuff like that. You can start to showcase some of that. So again, as we continue through the videos, we'll be building more sections. But I just wanted to show that off to you. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. Like, subscribe, share and follow. I'll see you soon. Never break, always fight, never quit, do it right, play the game, win it life, have no shame, there's no time, feel the pain, let the grind, I could change, in my mind, pick a lane, commit and climb, the only way, to win it life, I never miss that fact, taking big swings, bitch, hand me the back.